Hi, and welcome to Tetrionics. This short recording will cover the basic terminology used in Tetrionic theory and where it deviates from current use in science and scientific textbooks. Tetrionic theory is a precise theory of physics based on equilateral geometries. In developing the theory, it became imperative that I define and differentiate various aspects of general terminology and show their, their relationships geometrically. Nowhere is this more important than in differentiating and defining mass from matter. You can see in that picture here that mass is a 2D geometry by that I mean it's a planar Euclidean sheet, if you like, or a brain. And while matter is a three-dimensional topology, that is, you can take 2D equilateral brains or fields of mass energy, arrange them in a certain way via their charges, and create a closed volume, a topology, where it encloses a region of space. That is to say that matter has a physical topology, whereas mass energies are planar fields, they're immaterial. It's important to use the, topo the, the terminology and the lettering that I use in tetrionics, i.e. lowercase m for mass, uppercase m for matter, because in the mathematics it becomes very confused. For example, Einstein's mass energy equivalence E equals MC squared is quite often written with a capital M. In tetrionics this would be wrong because it would be energy equals matter by the square of the speed of light and in fact mass is matter by the square of the speed of light M equals capital M C squared. So you can see how confusion arises if you don't use the correct terminology in the correct lettering, uppercase, lowercase, etc. I extend that throughout tetrionic theory itself. You'll see that in the case of kilograms, which can be represent mass or matter, I use lowercase kg to indicate that I'm referring to masses versus capital case kg when I refer to kilograms or of matter. It's important you'll get to understand it more thoroughly as you become more and more familiar with tetrionics and as I explain it in more depth in uh, following recordings. You'll also come across things like squared numbers, n squared in mathematics, equating to equilateral fields, which are square meters. They're a scalar field. They have an, a surface area, so the brain can be square meters and square meters per second is a measure of that area of energy per unit of time and it forms angular or quantized angular momentum the omega that you'll see throughout tetrionic theory uh, omega being quantized angular momentum it is different it is not a rotation about a point it is an equilateral triangle so if you see omega think an equilateral triangle it also relate and think um, quantized angular momentum as in part of Planck's constant it's the constant part of Planck's constant it is a constant geometry it's often referred to um, in other guises within mathematics and, and physics theory such as spin flux curl things like that but they're all the same thing at the quantum level they all refer to electromagnetic charged triangles of energy you'll also see things like chem and bem and gem fields where planar mass energies form equilateral fields they are electromagnetic so in the case of just a triangle of bosons or, or quantum coins coming together they will form an EM field, an electromagnetic field. In the case of matter in motion, 
there's a secondary field created by the particle as it moves or as the force is applied to it. The energies of motion are stored in that secondary field and it's the kinetic energies and the magnetic moment of that particle in motion and I term that, electro, that secondary electromagnetic field a chem field, a kinetic EM field. They're similar but not quite the same as BEM fields in chemistry which is a bio electromagnetic field. That a BEM field is usually associated with a, for lack of a better word, a stationary or a rest particle of matter or a rest molecule and that's what imbues it with life, the characteristics of biology, hence the name BEM field. When tetrions, as in the particle of matter, are created from mass energy and, and that enclosed volume is created, matter itself creates gravity. Gravity is different from gravitation. Similar words, different meanings. And nowhere is that more obvious than in tetrionics. We'll discuss these terms in more detail as we go. But in short terms, universal gravi gravitation in tetrionics is revealed to be the result of gravity, the creation of matter in a region of space, plus the electromagnetic fields associated with that piece of matter. So hence the name a gravitic EM field, a gem field. It's the, the, the quantum of matter, the tetrion, plus its EM fields, be they bio EM fields or kinetic EM fields or just an electrostatic or electromagnetic field. The terminology is precise and it's used for a reason. A lot of people first encountering tetrionics and, and even myself are unaware of the need to differentiate between mass and matter. It's critically important, just like it's critically important to differentiate between charge and current uh, bosons and photons, uh, equilaterals and, and squared numbers, um, even transverse and longitudinal. All these terms are very specific. I'm often accused of having of writing word salads or long lengthy sentences full of big words or words like these, which people don't appreciate the specific reason why I use the words and the and form the sentences that I do. It is done because I am trying to represent what the quantum geometry is showing us in explaining the physical process that I've been questioned about. Um, as I said in the beginning of this discussion, mass is not matter. 2D is not 3D. You can make 3D objects, particles, out of 2D planar mass energies, but you can't make mass energy out of 3D matter. 3D does not make 2D. You can't go the other way. That's an important process, by the way, in how stars release uh, energy from their cores. They consume the matter, they crush it, they, they destroy the topology, and in doing so, they release mass energy back out into space. So there's a geometric process and specific wording that I use to try and explain every physical process that, that I'm asked or questioned about. Um, sometimes it, it can seem lengthy and sometimes it needs to be expanded upon further. But there are reasons why I use the words and they're very important reasons why they're used. Hopefully, um, as, you, well, as I explain tetrionics further step by step, through the series that we're going to go through here in Tetrionic University, you'll become more familiar with the terms, what they represent geometrically, and the need to have these specific terms both created and enforced throughout it. It becomes particularly important when you head into the relativistic mechanics where Einstein's equations and, and mass energy matter equivalents becomes critically important in understanding processes and differentiating between physical objects and the immaterial fields that surround them, be they gravitational 
biological or even just plain electromagnetic the the differentiation and the wording is very precise and it's absolutely needed in order to convey a clear understanding and elaboration of what is going on at the various levels of physics that we go into I hope this has been some use and it, it's portrayed exactly what I wanted to portray and that is that there's a there's a need to follow exactly what I'm saying and preferably make the models so that you can understand the difference between 2D mass energy geometries and 3D matter topologies along with their surrounding EM fields of whatever form they're in but I'll go through these steps as I explain each ebook and each chapter of the ebooks step by step and hopefully your understanding will grow over time as we progress.